What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I really hope that you enjoyed that intro. I put a lot of time and effort into that intro and I love the way it came out. So I hope that you guys did too. But without further ado, we are welcoming a new car to the channel. And we are welcoming my 94 JZX90 Mark II Tour V. So now, not to be confused with the JZX Chaser that a lot of people are familiar with, this is actually a Mark II. So in the JZX platform, as far as I know, if I'm wrong in the comments, somebody please correct me. But as far as I know, there are four different generations of the Chaser. There's the JZX 81, 83 generation, 
There is the JZX90 generation, which is what this is. There's the JZX100, which is what everyone so is sought after and what everyone wants to have. And then after that, there's the JZX110 generation, which contains cars like the Verosa. Um, I'm not too familiar with that generation, but today we are gonna be talking about my JZX90. In the JZX platform, there are actually three different chassis. There is the JZX Mark II, which is what this is. It is the base model of the sort. Um, there is the JZX Cresta, which is the luxury model. And there's the JZX Chaser, which is the sports model. Now, all of the cars are the exact same chassis wise. They all just have different bodies. I'm not really sure why Toyota decided to do that. It makes it hard for reproduction and like simple stuff like the windshield and the doors can't be interchanged, which is just strange. All the bodies are different, but they're the exact same chassis. And within those different models of the JZX, there are different sub-models of the Crestas, the Mark IIs, and the Chasers. What everyone wants is a Tourer V, which means that it comes with the turbo engine, so it's a 1JZ GTE non-VVTI for the 90s generation, and the VVTI for the 100 generation. So this is a Tour V, so that means that it came with the 1JZ, which is a two and a half liter, two and a half liter twin turbo inline six, non-VVTI head, so non-variable valve timing. And it came stock with the R154 manual transmission. So with that combination, this car is practically a commuter version of the Supra, which is what a lot of people one of these cars for. It comes with an incredible drivetrain and a lot of good aftermarket support and it was a commuter car in Japan so they're very easy to find parts for over there, not here. Um, and they were just very common so they were easy to get into and they made a great platform for people to get into that wanted something that was sport-like. Now if you haven't watched my last video I actually ended up selling my LS swap to BMW that car became such a headache for me. It had so many problems that I personally, I just, I couldn't deal with. It, it broke me mentally, financially, everything. And if you want to know more about that, you can go watch the previous video that I have on that. But we're introducing this new build and I could not be more excited about it. Also, if you hear squeaking throughout this video, I'm very sorry. I'm hoping that my lav mic isn't gonna pick that up, but it might. Um, the dash squeaks so I need to figure out how to fix that and also I know that this is here um, and that might be very distracting to some I've kind of gotten used to it since I've had the car but the window regulators are a thing window regulators are a thing in this car that go bad very frequently so I actually have the motor and everything but there's like a little plastic piece in here that broke that keeps the window from going up and down on the track so I've been working to try and fix that or get somebody to send me over a window assembly from Japan. But this suction cup is holding up my window in the meantime. I actually had a huge list of things that I needed for my next car. Uh, after going through so much heartache and trouble with that BMW and the 240, which I actually ended up selling my 240 and my daily driver to try and end up getting into that BMW and get a car that I could get content out of and I ended up getting nothing. So that's why it broke me mentally and financially. So I decided I needed something more for myself. I wanted something that was gonna be fun. I needed something that was going to be incredibly reliable, incredibly practical. Um, I wanted something that had a great aftermarket community. I wanted something that I could get in and drive every single day and have no second thoughts about it. Something that I could also take to the track if I still wanted to go drift this or autocross it or you know, just take it to a track day is it's still technically a sports car, sports sedan. It's a, it's a family car, but it's still so fun. I had all of these requirements that I needed to meet and all these boxes that I needed to check in order for my next car to be a good purchase. I really considered a 2013 to 2015 Honda Civic Si. I really wanted to turbo a K24 and make like a tr little track car. Um, but that would still be like super reliable, make like 400 wheel. I think that car would have been really cool, but Hondas, they just, they don't have a good reputation. And I've always had rear wheel drive cars. 
that. Like, uh, it was it was iffy for me if I wanted to do that. I then got on the kick of well, if I don't get a Civic SI and make it into a track backroads car or whatever, maybe I'll get into an Evo. But if anybody's familiar with the inflation that COVID has occurred, the car market is insane and Evos have skyrocketed. And I also really wanted an Evo 8 or 9, so the 4G63 took down that reliability factor. It's a good engine, but they're notorious for not being the most reliable. So it checked off all the other boxes, but it was expensive and I didn't know if I was gonna get into some car that was gonna have higher mileage and was gonna break within, you know, 5,000 miles of me driving it. I really considered an S2000 as well, which it would have been perfect. It checks all of the boxes besides practicality. Super reliable, fun car that I can take to the track, has a huge aftermarket community, all of the things that would have been checked off, but it's a two-seater. So it's not practical. I can't take a road trip in it. I can't use it for daily life without, you know, it becoming an interference. So I wanted something that I could daily. I miss when I drove the GTO and I could drive it every single day. It was just a cool looking car that had badass wheels on it. It had a cool sounding exhaust. I felt good driving it. I felt like it was an extension of my personality, which is what all of these cars are. So I wanted a car that I could daily, every single day. And I came across my JZX. Um, I started to see them being listed and everyone wants a JZX 100, right? Um, because they became notoriously popular because of Mr. LZ and the Japanese drifting community. But everyone wants a JZX 100 chaser, which they are very expensive. They, even them being 25 year old cars now, they're still going for about $50,000 for a clean example, which is just absurd. So this is a generation before. They're not nearly as sought after, but it's practically the same car. They use the exact same chassis and suspension. It's just an older body style. And I got this car for half that price. And I know within a few years, I don't really want to sell this car, but if I do end up selling it, I know that I can make money off of it because the prices are going to keep going up. I don't really want to end up selling it, but if I do, I know that I can make my money back because I got a hell of a deal on this car. And I'll talk about that in a future video. We'll do a full walk around on this car. I'll talk about all that's done to it, maybe all my future plans and the things that I want to do to it. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video today. I hope that you guys enjoyed the intro. I put a lot of time and effort into that. And I'd like to think that it's one of my best cinematic pieces that I've made. If you enjoyed stuff like that, I'll try and make more of it. I'm so ready to get some JZX content out on the channel. So if you guys are ready, please like, comment, subscribe. It really means a lot. And you guys have no idea how much it does for the channel when I get proper engagement because it tells YouTube to push my videos farther. So proper engagement always helps. If you guys have suggestions, if there's a video that you want to see me do with the JZX, please comment down below. What are your suggestions, your critiques? I'm all ears. But I hope you guys are ready for JZX content. Thank you guys for watching. Please come back next week because we're going to be doing some more JZX content and some more videos on this car. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.